I think two things, amazing things happen. Right now, Rick just described, just casually, that he, in-game, yaks on people. Yakking in a game is one thing, but yakking on someone is just a whole nother level. And then I want to acknowledge a second point. Yeah, this is cool. Just in full stride, Rick (laughs) called Blake Griffin. And Blake, who has every reason to not pick up. I didn't think he was going to answer. 100% picked up. Take your shoes off. I love that shirt, bro. Thanks, man. I, I gave you a shout out, by the way, on Tom Segura's podcast. He was talking about hooping. I go, you know who's good at hooping, man? I go, Rick Glassman can hoop, man. Because I think no. Rick Glassman has this great photo of him playing against LeBron James in high school. Really playing against Yeah, him? like. Really? Yeah, he's on like the free throw line or whatever, and like LeBron is like shooting a So Rick throw. was like an Ohio player? Oh, yeah, Rick, Rick's from Ohio, which is what? just an insane thing. Now, yeah. I heard he's really good. Rick's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That somebody, somebody told me that like he was. Like uh, I think playing a pickup game with someone, like somebody in entertainment, and they're like, "Hey man, like you gotta dial it back a little bit." Uh-huh. Like we're just like, he plays hard. We're playing ball. Yeah, I we're, love that though. We're all chasing. We're chasing something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't qualify it. You know, how sometimes people go, "Is he good?" And I, I didn't go, "Good for a comedian." Right. He's because... good. Because I grew, I grew up very religious, and then you know, obviously, I got into the arts, but then so I, I didn't have an inclination because I saw a lot of like comics early on, kind of. Alcohol really fuck them up. Drugs really fuck them up. I, I kind of got scared straight early on where I was like, eh, I'm not going to fuck with it. And then um, and then I read Walter Isaacson's book about Steve Jobs in like 2011. And, I, and he talks about doing um, MDMA and mushrooms and all that sort of shit uh, at, a young, at a young age. And that kind of opened up his mind. And I was like, oh, I'm about this. That, that sounds cool. Have you done that? No, I haven't. But maybe, but, but maybe if the time, like, you know what I mean? Maybe if there's just like the inflection point moment where I'm like, now's the time to do it. Oh, here we go. Last step. I can't do a autofocus because of the fireplace. Yeah. So I have to, I don't know if I'm a stand in. <laughs> yeah. Anything you need me to participate in, man, I'm, I'm ready to like stand in and take the charge, whatever you need me to do. This feels right. Yeah, it, but it feels like the, the, the best comparison I can make to it is um, when you're doing stand up. Uh, how's, how's the sound here? I'm in one. Oh, you're ear, crisp. Only. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear in both ears? Yeah, I, I got you. In, I got. I got you in both ears. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you're used to doing shows at a certain place, like this is not my home club, is what I'm getting at. Oh, you haven't made this like your little kind of habitat yet. Not yet. Not so yet. it feels like. What do you? I don't. You know, this is. I'm not uncomfortable, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not comfortable. Yeah, you're not in the pocket. Uh-uh. No, I'm never in the pocket until until 20 minutes in minimum. Really? Which reminds me. Uh, put me in a pocket or something. I don't know. But I'm going to get my edible. Oh, I thought you waited till the very end. No, you start it with takes, it. It, uh, it, takes, um, it takes like 40 minutes to kick in. Right, right. You're doing an inv- candid. No, it's for TMJ disorder. Oh, you, you like the jaw uh, bite your uh, really bite down hard, huh? My character does, so I'm trying to get into it. Uh, no, yeah, I grind. Shit, really? No. Oh, um, okay. I, uh, although I do play an obsessive compulsive character, but, um, I grind a lot. And, uh, last year I couldn't even, I could just get a toothbrush in. Damn. I could open it. So a little, you know, I've talked about Kiva chocolates on the podcast so many times. They're not a sponsor. Okay. They've sent me some free stuff, but no ad here. Kiva chocolates is the only way to go. Smoking hurts my throat, but do you know who is a sponsor? I'll give you a hint. It's the addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Do you give up or are you thirsty for more? It's Babbel. They design their courses with practical, real-world conversations in mind. And right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of trois. 
Go to Babbel.com and use promo code TISO. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code TISO for three months free. Babbel, language for life. I bet a lot of you would love to have straight and perfect teeth, but it takes way too long and it's a little too pricey. And let's face it, most people, they don't want to wear braces as an adult. Our new sponsor, Candid, works with orthodontists to bring you the happy and healthy smile of your dreams at a fraction of the cost of those in-the-way braces. It's a professional treatment plan that sends you clear teeth aligners. Right now, you could save $75 on Candid's starter kit. Go to candidco.com slash Tyso and use code Tyso. That's candidco.com slash Tyso, code Tyso for $75 off your starter kit. But why is Kiva Chocolates the way to go? Tell me more. Not that this is a plug. Um, it's the most consistent high. Okay. I know how high it's going to get me. Every single oh, time. Oh, these are edible chocolates. Edible chocolate. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Also, I've given, I've recommended it to people who have never smoked before. Right. And I found a good dosage, two and a half milligrams of that. Smooth sailing. Always. Okay. Now, how does your evening go? We're going to do our thing. We're going to hang out. We're, we're obviously doing this podcast. It's going to kick in. I leave. I move. I go on my, my merry way. Mm-hmm. What does Ricky G do for the rest of the like evening? You know, I, I, I never remember, but I'll tell you what I will do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to keep the cameras rolling. Okay. Okay. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to put in what happens later tonight. Yeah. And we'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, uh, before we get into you and why you're here, let me just let you in on my head. Sure. I'm now distracted with, do I cut to later on now to show and then cut back to three hours earlier? Or do I tag this at the end with Lola Bunny flying? I think, I mean, this, this could all be done in post. You, you just figure no, it out. No, but I'm saying, where does the audience see it? Does the audience see it now or at the end? I think you're going to get plenty of B-roll of me reacting. No, but so what take, I'm, what I'm saying is, where do we... Okay. Right? I don't know. And now I'm curious, do I do big titty Lola or do I do the more appropriate regular woman Lola? I think I think do uh, honor the original film and, and do that Lola. You pig. You <laughs> creep. You, wait, wait. Wait, I was trying to be... I was trying to play it. Hey, just honor whatever's on the IMDb artwork. Yeah. Let's go with that. You know about this controversy. No, I don't what's know the controversy? Oh, you don't know. You're yeah, just playing that's along. What, yeah, that's what, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just like yes ending you. I'm like, sure. Sure. Well, it's uh, the new Space Jam, Lola Bunny, who we all know Lola Bunny is drop dead gorgeous. Sure. Uh, the new one, they've made her intentionally, and I think it's beautiful. I think it's great. More realistically feminine. Still pretty, but you know, just- They, they make cur- her more voluptuous. They make her less voluptuous. Oh, less curves on the tits, more on the hips. Gotcha. As the old saying goes. Okay. I don't think there's an old saying, but. Well, it, 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 years from now, sure. she'll be referencing this. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, the bunny now just looks like a regular bunny. And people are mad that a, that a cartoon, this is the classic internet cartoon. It, why did you mess with the cartoon thing? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And it was like, oh, this, these fucking snowflakes, <laughs> you know, we want our fucking bunnies with huge tits and sloppy, you know. Right, right, right. I take my kids to this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. yeah. So, I got my kids that weekend. I got to see Lola Bunny this way. Okay. All right. So I, I'm going to jump right on in. Sure. And uh, I uh, I watched some Patriot Act uh, today and yesterday. I've seen it. Good okay. show. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, man. Everything's doing great. Yeah. But I was watching again because you try, you know you want to get in the pocket before someone comes over. You watch something they've done. Sure. I can't stop then, and I can't stop now looking at your hair. What does that have to do with your career? Do you think? It's insane, dude. A lot of people ask me about this. Really? I, I would say it's probably the fact you're like maybe the second or third person that has put me on the spot in an interview. That's like, yo, what is going on? I know what's going on. It's, I, I would say it's 60% of probably 60 <laughs> to 7. I'm, I'm not joking. When you turn, because you know, you turn to cameras and you. Camera four, yeah. I, I'm just, that's my favorite camera. It, camera four is stage left. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that turning. Yeah. yeah. Is that you're right handed? I am right handed. I wonder because. Because because you that's you drive from the right side. I sure. wonder. If that, I was thinking. I wonder why. I mean, it could have just been placement. Was that your choice to I'm, have the camera there? That wasn't my choice. But you can obviously see the way I pivot and turn. You have cameras on both sides. Yes. Yeah. You like to. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like to go right. The uh, I like to put the ball on the floor of the right. I I like most people who think they're good at basketball. I think I can go both ways. I can't. So I turn that way. 
quite a conundrum. You think you could go both ways. You're telling me you can't, which means you know you can't. I know I can't. So was there, is that like a realization you had later in life? It's a little bit of a like, hey, you got to check your ego. You got to know what you're good at. But early on, you know how when you play pickup with your friends, they're like, he can't go left. And you're like, oh, I can go left. And you're like, I can't go left. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it that you can't go left or you can't finish left? Same. I mean, now I feel seen. There were people that would say, because uh, I'm a slasher, right? And people would say to me, uh, oh, which is good. one of the most disrespectful, there's two disrespectful. He can't shoot, right? It, it's either uh, uh, play back, he can't shoot. Yeah. Uh, and that's super disrespectful. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a lights out shooter, but I shoot well enough. Yeah. Right. That's not what I get. What I used right. to always get was uh, uh, force him left. Oh. So I, I spent like, I, I thought I was going to like dedicate my life. This is after, I mean, you know, I'm in my mid twenties. I'm not competitive anymore. And I spent like- No, but when you, the times I've played with you, you play hard. <laughs> Talk about it, camera four. Rick plays hard. Ooh, some good art. When, when I play pickup oh, basketball with Rick, he, he exerts a lot of effort. I mean, oh. we're there for high fives and butt slaps, but Rick goes hard, no very hard. Having you very politically dodged down. talking about how good I am and just talked about how hard I played. We'll cut to a clip of you on some other podcast. <laughs> Rick's really good. And we're back. This, uh, this realization that you had that you're not as good as you thought you were. Yes. Uh, could you put that into other aspects of your life in the entertainment sure. business? Sure. I think we all kind of experience this sort of like existential angst. We're hurtling through time. Doesn't it feel that way? Time is passing. No. Whether we like, you don't feel that way? I mean, that, that could be the Kiva chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the crazy thing about time is we are hurtling through each it. other's sentences. Yeah. yeah. And, th and then, and then time is just closing the doors on certain dreams. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yes. And I agree. Yes. There is an argument. In fact, I might even yell it to be had, which is also time just shows us those doors were never possible. Correct. Correct. You know? Yes. Like, which is like wisdom. You're just like, okay, I, that, that relationship, that thing, Ball NBA. is life, NBA, ball is life. Because you, you, you read the passing line there. We, everybody was like, oh, you're going to talk about a relationship. We're talking about the real relationship that matters. Even on your passing ball. line, you, you went left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that door closes. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is. You're not going to the L, and that's okay. <laughs> at what point, though, or not what point, where's the, where's the difference between I think I could do this, so you're able to do what you people would think is impossible, what we yes. do, yes. versus... You know, like I remember, I, I, I remember I've had this at different times, but I, I remember multiple times I'm at the comedy store, right? right? And who knows? I mean, even now, I think you've, you're, you, you've made it, but like, who knows what's happening two years from now, right? Sure. Yeah. There are so many paths that we could choose, but when we were first starting out and tell me if you agree with this, it's stand up. Maybe it. at least yeah. other things, but yeah. it's stand up, yes. right? Yes. And we're, I'm sitting there and I'm watching other people and I know they're not good enough at this, but they don't know that, which makes me worried. Am I unaware? Oh, bro. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Am I crazy? Yeah. Do I not get it? Maybe I'm like, yeah. Totally. So at what point does the door close because of your age or do you just have, or is it because you have self-awareness so you know to not waste your time on that door anymore? Does that make sense? Yeah. I think, and then there's also just a thing of just, I, I don't have a desire to do this anymore. I just don't have that feeling to go to Santa Monica to audition for uh, a Pizza Hut commercial anymore. We can right. cut. To, we can cut to my Pizza Hut commercial. Get nine in a box for just ten bucks. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Hey Rick, tell me more about this rug. It's from my uh, my dad's local rug store. It's not Marshall Rug Gallery, is it? How do you know about Marshall Rug Gallery? Well, how would I not? I mean, everybody knows about Marshall Rug. Do Gallery. you really know about Marshall Rug? For real? Yeah. Send us away. Let's cut to commercial. Snap. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, We've got you covered! And we're back. I, when I, you know, 
we haven't seen i don't know years years it's probably been years yeah years i mean I'm, i i moved to new york seven years ago yeah so 2015 right 24 yeah 2014 2015 yeah uh-huh. for daily show for daily show mm-hmm. we're gonna get people who are here for a sound we're gonna get into it sure uh but before we do uh <laughs> another pizza commercial you know? <laughs> yeah. uh when i see friends uh, on TV and stuff who I haven't seen in a while. Right. There are certain things that like that's my my relationship with Azan uh, uh, boils down to this moment. You know, it happens with a lot. And it's yeah. it's oh, it's not a moment, but it's Westwood Bruco. Wow. Do you know what moment is for me? That time we went to lunch at Hugo's Tacos here in Studio City. One time we just got lunch at Hugo's Tacos. Just you and me? Yeah. I don't remember. Dude, it was like one outside. Of, yeah. This is, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but, you know, before podcasts, we had to re- kind of record every single social interaction that we have in this sort of never ending glut of content that uh, that is living now. People would just meet up. People would meet up and have lunch and, and do things just to do them. Weird. Yeah. You're and for people who are listening audio only. I want to I want to uh, praise a, 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 a tool that you obviously have. Sure. There's this weird dynamic I, I have on podcasts, which is sometimes I need to get the exposition out, even though you know it, the audience does it. But it's weird to talk to the audience, but you just turn to camera. Yeah. And then back to me. Yes. I like it. Yes. <clears throat> oh, you okay? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Sorry about that. That was a PB&J sandwich before, right? Almond butter. That's making you burpy? I don't think it was that. Got it. I think I'm just Jewish. Okay. I just... There's a lot of burps, a lot of poops. A lot of times it's, it's not even me. Are you sensitive to onions now? Uh, I mean, if they're thrown at me or if I'm eating them or if I'm cutting eating, them. Eating, eating, eating. I don't After have, a certain hour, you're like, I can't. I don't have enough self-awareness, of, of I don't think. Okay. I eat tons of onions. Got it. But I fart constantly. I have no problem with it, though. But don't we all? We drew him with original Lola Bunny tits. <laughs> really? Yeah. With <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Two thousand dollars. There we go. Um, Westwood Bruco. Yeah. For me, Hassan is uh, where that was. Westwood Bruco was every Thursday night. Yes. And Bra- do you remember Brandon Knoyer? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. Brandon Knoyer, um, and you were the ones that were there, and Melissa V. Senior most of the times. So. Yeah. But I went every Thursday because you. This is a free show. Sure. What? How else are we going to get up? Yeah. And you were always there, and your shoes were always good, and <laughs> okay. and you looked like then you looked like you had the money you have now. You were wow. always you were always just fresh. That's what you saw when you saw me. Every Thursday, wow. almost every Thursday, you just always looked good. You knew a lot about ball. Uh, you had good shoes. What was your perception of me? Were you just like this guy who dresses like an Indian game show host just comes here? Every My, but it, you were. What was your? Do, do you know what I'm saying? Because I don't think a lot of times people know what. You don't know how I see you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that became bit clear versa. to me late in life. By the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't only know you from that. That's just like my An, just a moment that's like etched in your head. Okay, so goat you. face. Yes. Uh. Uh. Asif Ali, Aristotle Atheris, Fahim Anwar, Hassan Minaj. Really great sketch group. Let's go to a sketch. Hassan! Come downstairs! Damn it. We have an announcement finally on whether cell phones cause something that can all of us and our children. We got you a present? An LSAT book? <laughs> you use the YouTube one, right? Because you couldn't clear the CC one? Comedy Central's tough, man. Hey, man, Viacom stuff. You guys uh, you guys are doing sketches. Yes. John DeWalt and I. Do you remember John? Of course. That guy and his friend. Uh, we were doing sketches. Yeah. And John from Juilliard. Rick, so good to see you. <laughs> I know. Are you living here in L.A.? Yeah, I'm in La La Land doing acting. You? Yeah, I got an agent. Whoa, I bet you're getting tons of work. Well, if you consider primetime movies and t- TV shows tons of work, then yeah. What about you, man? Oh, I'm in big name acting studios, tons of union work, insurance. Are you on a hit primetime finale TV shows, bro? Well, I am pretty busy and tired. Looks like Julia was worth it. Bye. You guys, your sketches always look like 
you're going to have a that, Comedy Central show at some that's point. That's Aristotle, though. Yeah. That's all Aristotle. He's yeah. amazing. He's incredible. Um, Got to get him on the pod. Get on the pod, Ari. So I watched all your sketches. There was you guys, there was us, and then there was Ryan something. I don't remember the what name. What about women comedy? Jake Weissman and uh, Matt and all those guys. I didn't know them. Oh, they were pretty good, too. They, their show now is corporate. Oh, corporate. yeah. I know Jake. who they are. Yeah, 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 I, yeah I didn't know. Yeah. And they were doing sketches when we yeah, were. Yeah. yeah. I, would, uh, I would watch all the sketches because this is like, this is the little community. There was part competition and part totally, like, yeah. like we're in on this together. Do, what, what is your take from, from sketches and where do you think that helped your career? I think it was just like, maybe it's naivete. I think it's good that our naivete was just, Hey, I'm going to try to get really good at stand up and I'm going to try to make a sketch. You all right? Like I was t- telling you before, I check the cameras, and if I yeah. don't do it, I always do it when the guest is talking, so the home audience doesn't know, but... Yeah. No, no, no. The look of concern on your face, I was like, oh, shit, is everything okay? It's a naivete. I want to make sure that's on camera. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Go on, though. Yeah, it's just naivete. It's just like, look, if I can just be able to do this, that'll probably pay the rent. And 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 just being in it long enough and being naive, I think, was beneficial. Because if I actually thought about the odds, I probably would have gone to law school. The odds of, of making it the odds of being a, the, the odds of being able to make it in entertainment and stand up and sketch in any of you know you just crunch the numbers it's yeah. so astronomically insane it's probably not worth considering especially when you're just young and developing your your skill set or whatever that's the door that I was thinking before at what point is you you're you accidentally open it right um s- sketch is uh is it antiquated? I mean, it, I mean, it's still like, like even on your show, you put sketches in, but it's not a sketch show. No, 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 no. I don't know. I mean, you you might know better than me. Fahim probably Fahim has such a great sketch mind. I would I would lean on like Fahim and Ari. I would come in with like takes. I'd be like, this is a take I have. This would be a cool, you know, those sort of things. But like, their encyclopedia is crazy. Didn't uh, your uh, when when Affleck was uh, he he. What would if something with Bill Maher? He basically called him out for Muslim bashing, right? Yeah, a little bit. Just like yeah, he was just like uh, him. Uh, Bill Maher and Sam Harris were kind of having a, a moment. They're very kind of anti-religion, and then Ben Affleck came in. I think he was promoting one of his movies at the time, and was like, "Yo, this is insane." And it was just this very viral moment that happened. And I ended up writing a chat about it for my Daily Show audition. And uh, then what? You this is twenty. This is twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Yeah. You. You, it's, 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 and that's luck again. You know, Michael Che leaves the Daily Show to go back to SNL. He was at SNL for a little bit as a writer, went, came to the Daily Show as a correspondent, then he left. There was an opening. What's the, how do you know? What's the process? I, at the time, my manager was ju- just said, you know, she just said, hey, uh, you can submit an audition tape. And, and by the way, Aristotle helped me with my audition tape. Shout out to Ari with his Instagram handle. Shout, up out, here. shout out to Ari. Shout out. And th- that, the sketch, the Batman, uh, yeah, Ben Affleck is a that, written sketch that I did for my that I did for my desk chat with John. So that I did for my screen. Okay, let's rewind. Right. T- t- let's let. So it's 2014. Your manager says it's 2014. My manager at the time says, "Hey, they're looking for a correspondent for the Daily Show." I'm like, "Holy shit! Like this is actually one of my skill sets." And so I thought I wasn't going to get it because Asif Manvi was on the show and he would come back and forth and do correspondent segments. So I was like. Do they need me? Do they not? But I just felt like I had a skill set, like mm-hmm. huge fan of the show, love politics. I, I just loved like kind of having a, a political take and, 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 and watching the news and kind of have like putting together like a quick little act based on that. I was already doing these like tr- short little segments with Ari called The Truth with Hasan Minhaj. I would do that. That was part of like Goat Faces. That was our version of like weekend oh, update. Oh, I vaguely yeah, remember. I would Where like I, I would wear out? like these. I would wear these robes, and then I in this like very like elaborate, almost it was like a super fancy like library kind of setup, which was just at my apartment complex. We'll cut to a clip. Yeah, we'll cut to a clip. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. <laughs> oh, wrong. I'm sorry. And if you want to learn more about Sikhs and Muslims, go outside. Ask. We're a part of the community. All right, we're your neighbors. We go to school with you. We're probably your doctors as well. Just ask. That's the truth with Assam Minaj. Peace, love, Assalamu alaikum, namaste, sasriyakal, deuces. Yeah, so so then I ended up, you know, I ended up being like, oh, I totally know how to write a daily show chat. You basically have a news story, you have a comedic take, and you just beat it out to its logical conclusion. 
So what is the audition for? The audition is to sit at the desk. The audition, not a correspondent. The, the audition, the actual audition for the Daily Show is you have to do a previous chat that John did with another correspondent. So there was a Jason Jones chat that was oh. in the audition packet. I ended up finding the old Jason Jones episode online, and because you know, you know, Goatface, we were just kind of like little like internet hustlers, so mm -hmm. to speak. I found it, I ripped it offline, and then I knew enough about editing so that. I edited it. And I edited mine in such a way that it looked like I was on the show talking to John. But so, what are they checking? Because if uh, you're you're not able to come up with your own questions, you have to just repeat the questions John asked. I had to repeat the script that they gave me. That's what they wanted of you. Yeah, but I I changed it slightly. One and then two, I talked to Al Madrigal. Shout out to Al Madrigal. I'll put his Instagram handle up here. Yeah. So Al was like, "Hey, one of the things they tell you to do on the show, especially when you're a correspondent, is you got to do field pieces." So I just, I went out and within like two days shot my own field piece with Ari. So, so the, the desk thing is almost like, we don't want to know if you're a good lyricist. We just want to see you rap some biggie. It's sure. somebody else's words. Do you have the cadence? I mean, how could they see something no, well, from that? No, well, like if you've ever watched the show, this goes way back to even the original origins of the Daily Show with um, Craig Kilborn. What, what Kilborn would do and then when, what John would do when he took over in 99 was it 99 or no? Yeah, I think he took over 99. Anyways, he would sit at the desk and then he would throw to Lewis Black and him and Lewis would have a conversation about a news story at the desk. So your screen test is basically what's called an act two desk chat, which you've seen these before. Like a court, John Oliver will sit across from John and, and kind of, John, this is my story, yeah. right? Colbert famously did them all the time with John. Um, sometimes they'd have two correspondents and then John and John would kind of moderate. So yeah, you, for your screen test, you do you do what's called a desk chat. So uh, you, your first thing was uh, your first audition. You sent in a video. I sent in two videos. And then what they asked me for, and then my own field piece at the same time. At the same time, one submission. They go, "We like this guy. Let's fly him out to New York." Yes, Let's fly to New York first class. Coach, Ooh. I think it was coach. Yeah, I think it was coach. Okay, yeah. You fly out to so you fly out, uh, and it's like dirty. And you, this is not going to happen. You're in coach. Right. You get there. How many? Is it like testing where you see the other people there? From what I understood, other people did test that day, but they space us out so you don't see each nice. other. Nice. Yeah. So you go in there. Yeah. Are you thinking this is your big shot or are you thinking it's a long shot? Are you nervous? I don't know, man. I think it was one of those things, man. I had auditioned for so many things that I wasn't good at. <laughs> like, like there were so many sitcoms I was just straight up garbage at. This was one of those few where I was like, I think... I'm actually in the pocket. I'm going to remember where we are, but why? Why are it, The things you auditioned for are out of your skill set, or is, is sitcoms not something that you feel you'll ever be no, good I, for? No, I mean, I, I was in... Um, I had been in a sitcom. I had been in this ABC Family sitcom that, you know... It, it was just one of those things where... You know how when you're, you're on stage and you're crushing? No. <laughs> but I've had people tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's like... It's just like... I knew this. I knew I was in my bag here. Yes. I, I was like, I, dude, I, I just so know this. Like, you're already, you've been doing it with Ari. I've been doing it with Ari. We, we write these, we produce these ourselves. Like, I've, I've had so much practice at this. You're this also is be a breeze. back to saying the at Westwood Bruco, the way you talk about basketball, the way you talked about basketball, right, is the same thing. It's the same. Like, Analytical. I'm not going to lose. Yes. And yeah. you're, you're making sure, I don't know if it was learned or just instinctual, but you, you have a th way with your hands of making sure that like, no, over here, let's go. This uh -huh. is where it is. Yeah. And it was just like, I, I love basketball because I play ball. Right. And I watch because I like the Cavs. I didn't grow up with it. I don't know everything. You had so much information uh -huh. and you were telling me things that I was just like, I don't, I don't know about any, I can't keep up with you. Okay. You have this intellectual side. But you're a smart guy. People don't know this. Rick, you're like a, a math guy. Your major in college was like math, right? It was it was uh, marketing and drama. But I... No, Brent told, Brent told me you're very smart and you're very good at math. I am very good at math, but it wasn't a major. So then how did Brent know that you're good at math? He must have added it up. We'll be right back after word from <laughs> okay, our sponsors. S'il te plaît, tais-toi. I'm recording an ad. Sorry about that. I haven't tried learning a new language since high school. And if you know anything about me, I, uh, it was hard to do. 
So I'm really excited that Babbel, the number one learning language selling app, oh my gosh. So I'm really excited that Babbel, the number one selling language learning app, decided to jump on board with Tyso. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I'm wanting to learn French and Spanish. Spanish because I live in Los Angeles and French because my girlfriend speaks French and she is a belle fille. Their lessons are just 15 minutes, which make it perfect for you to do them on the go. I think I'm gonna do my first lesson on the toilet because that's where I have 15 good minutes. Or should I say, Puede we are al baño, por favor. Babbel only teaches with practical, real-world conversations in mind. Things you'll use in real life. It's not teaching you how to say, the table smells like salt. Because <laughs> you wouldn't say that in real life. You can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of tr trois. <laughs> Just go to Babbel.com promo code Tyso. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com and use the promo code Tyso to get six months for the price of three. Babbel. Punch in. Language for life. Teeth are really important. Trust me. <laughs> and they're really expensive to, 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 to not stutter over. And they're also really expensive to straighten. But our new sponsor, Candid, makes these... These great, clear, comfortable, removable, practically invisible aligners that help straighten your teeth. Candid only works with orthodontists instead of general dentists that work with a lot of other brands and ships the aligners to you so the treatment is done at the comfort of your own home. Sharon H. from Pittsburgh, PA writes, and I apologize in advance, I'm not great with accents. I wore braces as a teenager. Flash forward 30 years, I had crowding on the bottom and one of my teeth actually stuck out and that's when I made the decision to move forward with Candid and I finally got my confidence back. Does that sound like Pittsburgh PA? Become your best you. Start straightening your teeth today. And right now you could save $75 on Candid Starter Kit. Go to candidco.com slash Tyso, code Tyso. That's candidco.com slash Tyso, promo code Tyso. Take advantage on this limited time offer and save $75 on your starter kit. That's candidco.com slash Tyso, code Tyso. And we're back. Nice. Uh, I'm just, I'm good Nicely with, done. like I'm good with puzzles and patterns and numbers. And uh, I am not... It, uh, the point I'm making isn't about my intellect. Sure. It's that... Uh, and look, I think I honestly... 50% of it too was that I look like an Indian news anchor. Like... You put me in the suit. You're like, yeah, he looks the part. No, you, you were, know? you were in, you were, you were just walking the hip hop runway when I'm talking to you. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that you're, I'm not, I'm not, uh -huh. what I'm saying is, sure. You knew something I didn't know about. Okay. Which is, will always be the case for everybody. The X's, this is the, the X and, X's and O's of basketball. I know the X's and O's, my friend. I just don't know who the guys are and what college right. they went gotcha, to. Right, gotcha, gotcha. And all the 80s references yeah, and shit, yeah. you know? Kind of like the dorky uh, Bill Simmons yes. level analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you were so, you knew so much that for right or wrong, I just trusted you and I went for the ride. I, I'm, just, I'm just talking about whether you're talking about, uh, you know, poli sci or you're talking about sports it's a similar thing that you have okay um this went on too long fast forward a lot of this but keep it in the point i'm making is i understand that being your wheelhouse like you could break stuff down you could break stuff down distill things down to their core yes. comedic elements okay uh so i connect with that being in your wheelhouse but all the other things that you went in for or do you not want to act no, I'm acting. I'm I'm out here shooting a show. You I'm know. sorry. I yeah. meant on sitcoms. Um, you know what, man? I think this is the thing with time. The more I, the more I've been creative, like writing my own one man show, hosting my own show, uh, Co White House Correspondent Center, all these things that I've kind of written and produced myself. Your one man show is your stand up special, right? Yeah, Homecoming King. Yeah, yeah. But Check it's, it on Netflix. But it's the style of like a, a storytelling show, like three acts. Each act is 15 to 18 minutes. There's actual act breaks. You know what I mean? I do. Um, I'm writing one. For real? Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna have so much fun. I, uh, you're going to have so much fun. Uh, Stand-up uh, uh, stand is hard. Um, and one of the obstacles I faced uh, was often that people have expectations that I'm not meeting. And that was always fun because it lets me deconstruct and play with yeah, those things. Yeah, and, and kind of break expectation and norms. Yes, know? but... Uh, where people aren't uh, willing to question things. And my biggest problem 
with people, but the obstacle I have as a comedian isn't that people don't understand or they're not on the same page. It's that they don't have the instinct to question and they know things that they don't know. That's what I was saying about the basketball. I don't know about this stuff and that's okay. Uh People see me go do something. They know what I'm doing and they're wrong instead of questioning it. So I found these little cheats and how important my first one minute is on stage to make them at least question things. And I found that if I were doing a one-man show and not stand-up, yeah. it would just change what the expectations Completely. are. Uh, and I don't remember if you were the first, but around then, I didn't know about Edinburgh until around when your special came out, by the way. Right. I'm like, oh, these people, they're calling these one-man shows. Yes. That's so much better than a comedy special. I just, I just feel it opens the door to the audience understanding. Yeah. So yeah, for the past year plus, I've been... That's awesome, man. I can't wait to see it. Thanks. Because the... the, the it's almost like this. Paul Provenza told me this. Imagine if, imagine if musical notes, you know music better than me, but if magical music notes were, were through letters A through Z, stand-up allows you to play notes A through M. But as soon as you take that to the stage, you can play N through Z. So you can play with lighting, sound, music, uh, act break, all of these things, these other elements that, yeah. that you can't bring into a comedy club. Which if you're may- doing act breaks in a comedy club, people are like, what the fuck is uh-huh. going on? Again, you're breaking expectations. You're not, you know what I mean? Which makes it a lot harder to practice, by the way. Sure, I, like, sure. N- you need sound cues, lighting cues, design. Yeah. Uh, but that's an f- interesting analogy because I think about that all the time with numbers. I'm so good with numbers. I, uh, I, we're coming up, you know, we're dating this episode, but we're coming up on Pi Day and, and I, uh, a couple pie days ago, I spent maybe five minutes and I got to over a hundred digits of memorizing pie. 3.141592653589739323847950288419716939937 I'm very good at remembering numbers. Are you serious? I quit I can't pie is maybe the biggest word I could spell. I can't spell. If you were to tell Did me Did you ever get into gambling? Yes. Like in like betting and stuff like that. And, yeah. And poker. Were yeah. you very good at it? I'm okay at poker. I get too competitive. Like I get, I, I'm a risk. I, I'm i good for po- After an hour of poker, if I, I get too bored of playing numbers and people and I'm all in on everything. Oh, so then you get, you kind of get hasty and you, and you start playing on tilt. Yes. That was one of the favorite, one of my favorite uh, lessons that I've learned about poker, playing on tilt. Lessons yeah. as in the term or I love, when people- I, lo- I love the term. I love like what it means and why you shouldn't do that. And there's times where I'm like, oh fuck, in life, I'm playing on tilt. Yeah, and it's funny because sometimes- It's so cool that it teaches you that lesson. The psychology of tilt in different sport, like going on tilt in basketball is like- Playing aggressive. Waking a a giant, you know? Yeah. So it's a bit of mind thing. But what I'm I'm getting at is the analogy you gave. uh, I think numbers are easy. One, because math is just a language is unbreakable. But also there's 10 digits. That's it. There's 26 letters. There's too many things. Right. So your analogy of just like, incidentally, made me think of that. Um, you know, you know another reason why I think you may love math so much. It's objective. It doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. It's cold. It 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 is. Yeah. It is so finite and clear, in its in its you know presentation to you, whereas human beings are are complicated, illogical emotional were all of these things which are unlike numbers the way you you said something which i've spent so much of my time thinking about especially yes. this past four or so years yes was we don't know how we're casted like you don't know how rick sees you i don't know how you see me sure uh this is um i know what two plus five equals yeah so there's just there's just there's just a truth to it um and also, yeah, it's not about perception at all. Two plus five is seven. Yes. It doesn't matter how I perceive it or you perceive it. It is, it is that. There's also, and this is very corny, and I'm not this math science genius, but there's something I, I find, I'm not, I guess, surprised, if not surprised, reminded at how beautiful, the same way you look out in nature when you could see from far enough away and what things look like and what mountains and valleys look like. To see not just the numbers, but what they represent, the patterns they make, and I just remember when I when I learned um, how to multiply by nine, and uh, you put down your first finger, it's nine. Your second finger, it's one space eight. 
two space seven, three space six, oh, and just dope. these patterns, yeah. and everything is just so symmetrical. And then once you understand that symmetry, you don't have to count anymore. You just look for those patterns. Right. Um, I don't want to talk too much about this. I'm does, g- does jokes and writing have that or yeah. no? I've said this many times on the podcast, but there's maybe eight jokes. They're all the same formula. What is it? High, low status, doing something dangerous, right? Making, calling someone. Doing something dangerous. That, oh, I would call that shock. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, or, or like, um, it's almost like the comedians being the student in class that's doing something, being naughty. They're doing something they're not supposed to be doing in class. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or shock. Or yeah. Sure. Saying, uh, be, uh, saying be, a bad word. About race yeah. or, or, or sex or whatever. Shock. I haven't consciously necessarily bro- that number is arbitrary but there's misdirection yeah. there's shock there's deconstruction uh there's impressions there is uh parody or satire just which is different to me than deconstruction because uh deconstructing is is just breaking down how it's made versus like pretending we're in the 80s uh yeah, work, work with me i mean more than um, you can think of um well, there's wordplay Sure, like puns and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, right. Uh, not intended, I assume. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a couple more, but like at a, on a macro level, there's only so many. Yeah, and um, that's the A through M that I'm talking about. That kind of like, hey, these are the notes. Like you can arrange it whichever way that you want. the 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 note that I was trying to think about was, what does storytelling play? Like, there's really great st- storytellers. Mike Birbiglia is a great storyteller. Colin Quinn's a great storyteller. There's a bunch of comedians. Chappelle, obviously, one of the yeah. greats. Kevin Hart, great storyteller. Like, he'll What's, tell these longer stories. I know? could I could argue either side that storytelling is a form of comedy or it is literally a stage that comedy is put on. Because without a story, there's right. two there's two ways of doing stand-up. There's you're telling stories or you're not telling stories. That that's it. Yeah. Um, and the the far end of the spectrum of not telling stories is is unconnected one line. Like Hedberg, or, right? Like yes. Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesselneck, um, like. But even but even Hedge, uh, uh, Mitch Hedberg, it may have not been a conscious choice of his, but he is telling a story of a stoner and how he thinks, or this character of a stoner how he thinks. There right. is always a narrative there. And the best comedians, the names you mentioned, are able to take control of that and bring us on the journey. Yeah. But some people with with enough charisma, energy, or really sharp punchlines, they don't need to. But storytelling in every aspect, whether it's on stage, whether it's a comedy, it's a drama, it's a play, it's music, it's relationships. You know, we only, you know, like we've talked about uh, what our remembrance of one another is. It's still a story that we created, whether we know it or not. Everything right. is built on story. What do you do in that story? Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm getting, uh, I think I'm getting a little. Is, is the Kiva starting to hit? No, but I, I'll tell you two things. Yeah. Coffee. And there's something about the, some people you just want to talk to. To. I want to hear what you have to say, and it's I bring, want you to hear what I have am, to say. Am I bringing it out of you? I'm feeling good. I feel like I'm bringing yeah. it out of you. Yeah, because I don't, I don't see this side of Rick a lot. Uh, what, what do you normally see? Sometimes when I'm, when I'm the vantage, when I'm watching Rick in the wild, what I'm seeing or what I remember seeing is you deconstructing a lot of these other games. So sometimes I would see Rick doing a character, committing fully, fully committing to a bit, deconstructing the expectations of something of a. Of a social interaction. Jesus. Sorry. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, that kind that, of stuff? Yeah. That stuff like that. Yeah. <sighs> did, and, I throw, it, did I throw you well, off too yeah, much? And, well, and that's, it can be distracting. Yeah. Um, but my joke to distract did what it was supposed to do. Totally. Um, and It broke expectations. It, you know. But it also yeah. maybe got you off. I do this all the time. Uh, I am making fun of the thing by doing it. Thus, it becomes real and not making fun of anymore. Totally. And I really wanted you to finish what you were saying. Are you able to get back on or did I blow it? No, I think I can. Uh, so when I would observe you doing those things, I'm like, oh, he's deconstructing all of these social. So what What I w- felt like I was watching was you doing the playing out the play of, oh, this, oh, this would be funny if me and John yeah. act like we're friends, but we hate each other. This would be funny if, and you keep kind of playing with those expectations and norms. Oh, people, people are watching us. And what's the, fight, what's the point? What's the point that you're making? That- oh, it was just, it was, it was, it, that's watching you uh, playing. playing the thing. You're, you're, you're gotcha. giving, you're giving me the um, Kobe Bryant muse. I'm going <laughs> to analyze. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what it is, which to me is cool. It's the DVD commentary. 
the uh, it's a podcast. Yeah, you saying that what, imagine if is is literally how I articulate what my brand is. The reason, funny or not, my intention is imagine if. Yeah, and where the disconnect happens with people is one, they can't imagine if because they think this is really it, um, and, or two, they don't care. And finding that balance of when do I get to play the imagine if and versus when does it really throw the other person off? Completely, yeah. And it's never going to be perfect. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I have to and I have accepted that I'll get better at it, but this is where I am now. Yeah. Um, but then you and, 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 and I'm going to take charge of the tools that I have and know then you get off track. I'm talking too much about this stuff. I have you on the couch. I have so many questions I want to ask you. Hit so me. I want to get back into All it. Right, talk to me. I do feel great right now. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk more about the audition. Sure. And you are, you're, you were a poly sci major, right? Poly sci major. Yeah. Unfortunately. You you were thinking, why unfortunately? Well, because I mean, I, I I wish I had a technical degree. I wish I would have had like an engineering. What would you have done with it or do with it? I think under understanding engineering and, and, and math either through like computer science and programming, which I think, which I think now is the language of the world. Shout out to Fahim Anwar, by the way. Shout out to Fahim Anwar. And I think he's, he's aeronautical, which is like the real deal. Yeah. Um, versus like poli site, bro. Like that's, it's what you do for a living. I mean, but what do you want to do? Build airplanes? No, no, no. But the 60 units of political science honestly is like high school civics level stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't particularly deep or, you know what I mean? I think it was just kind right. of like a waste of a waste of time. That I, being said, I, I was in college. I, I did a ton of stand up. I started yeah. finding other interests. You started, I, you started what? When you were 20? Uh, 19. Yeah. Yeah. Were you able to get into clubs? Because they have a 21 um, minimum. I started being able to get to clubs by like my junior year. Yeah. I started doing like the Sacramento clubs and the San Francisco clubs. Yeah. Junior, senior year. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get into the feelings of college because I do think if you're not going to graduate school, what's the point? But did you go to college? Yeah. I'm marketing and uh, in theater. Did you did you end up finishing? I finished. Yeah, I finished with a whole bunch of intramural championships uh-huh. and uh, oh, dude, t-shirts. I, dude, I was envious of the people who won IM championships. What was that like? Win what championships? An IM intramural championship. It was. It was. Uh, In what level were you? Were like the level A basketball champ? Yeah, I mean, we were playing oh, against the fuck, D1 football bro. team. I mean, that's incredible. When I tell you it is winning an NBA champ, I know how important it is to win an NBA championship yeah. because you see the t-shirt you didn't get and the whole next year is working out you know, networking with the players who play well with you uh, and winning that fucking T-shirt. That was life. Being ball is life is is really is a thing. It's a thing. You need that T-shirt and then you get the T-shirt and then it's stiff, <laughs> you know? And I still, I mean, it's, uh, I, I have my sleep shirts. I don't wear it with the clothes I wear. Never touch my bed. So I wear my sleep outfit usually two or three nights. And okay. the one right now is one of my championship T-shirts. And you have four of them. Uh I don't know. I have a few, but, but I only but, won intramural at but, Kent State. I only won it once. So you, so you got one, and it was sweet from the main one. I got a few from like side chat, but oh, it was sweet. Yeah, I mean, we played against uh, Antonio Gates. I don't know if you know who Antonio Gates no. is. He's on the Chargers now. No, but it sounds. I mean, it sounds but, intense. Uh, D one football and basketball players because they were allowed to play in it. I mean, it was. And it the was, fact that you like Rocky beat Apollo Creed, you went the distance. Yeah, yeah. bro. I mean, nothing is sweeter. I mean, and you there's can, some you, things. You, you, can, you, can, you can dunk too, right? I probably can't t- right now, but I could have last summer. That's incredible. Thanks, I've always, man. I've always wished I could dunk. I could hang on the rim. That felt pretty cool. I could get a good grab in it, like a swing, and that felt kind of cool. If I feel like dunking is similar to our careers, where we think we just want to be able, to, let me get on this show, let me get this special, let me get this job. No, nah, I, the dis- next I thing. disagree. Dunking is because because I the could thing. dunk, uh-huh. but. I need it to be like, if you see me on a fast break, I want to be yeah. able to just dunk know, on somebody. I, uh, I have. I remember the first time I wow. dunked, first time I dunked on somebody. Rick, what what are we even, why? Thanks, man. This whole thing should be about that. No, we're get, listen, we're getting more into it. You're staying for a little bit longer. We're getting more into it. But I do want to tell you about my first experience dunking. Sure. It was, I'm at the JCC. Yeah. And the rivals i don't know did you ever have like local rivals or people that come to camp come to the same gym that you guys just don't like each other yeah and bad blood yeah All and right. i uh, had an adrenaline rush and yeah. i had just been able to dunk now for a couple months yeah and i went and i tried it foolishly i thought the door was unlocked and i kicked it open okay i dunk on him every everybody like the you know the, my team so four guys three because one of you didn't know going ape shit but i wanted them i wanted 
people to think that I had, this is what I do. Yeah. So I was trying not to celebrate. And I think that's just a, 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 an interesting metaphor that I was trying to control how other people felt about me instead of enjoying my first dunk. But luckily, I've been dunking on people for years since, so it's okay. Oh, you have multiple victims. I've, I, have two victims. That, I have two victims. What does I've done that it feel enough. like to snatch a soul? I'll give you an honest answer. Give me an honest answer. The validation of other people who are better than you. You ever see like when somebody... Somebody on the Lakers, or just like when 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 you see LeBron, even watching like his high school games, when LeBron is taken back, or when Kobe, like when yeah, he's great to take it back, yeah, they could do it, but it doesn't mean what that person just did isn't awesome in this moment in time. Yeah. Hey, let's do a quick thing. Let's just let's cut to a montage of goat reactions, i.e., Kobe, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and we're back. If uh, if we couldn't clear those reactions, uh. We're just going to show Hassan just yeah. doing a whole bunch of those. Yeah. Um, but having people be like, oh, oh, doing that, dude, you're 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 eight feet tall, but like eight feet tall in a world that were uh, tied doors and you're supposed to be that big. Yeah. You know. So it's everything that I. Yeah. It. I. I've I can't. Dreamt of. Yeah. I can't imagine people who do it every day. It. The feeling goes away. It's great. Did you ever ask Blake about this? Because he's he must have he's he's jumped over cars. Ask him about what it feels like to dunk. Yeah, to snatch bodies. Get him on the phone now. No, I mean, he's got to play. I mean, he's... he's he's. he's in, in, Is there a game right now? Well, he's... I mean, he's... He just signed uh, with uh, yeah, no. the Nets and... Also, I don't anticipate him answering, but that would be pretty cool. We're just going to go for it? Yeah. Okay. Do you know him? Uh, I don't know. It's cool that you know him, though. It's so cool. It's pretty cool. So cool. I know JJ Reddick. Get him on the phone. Should I get him on the phone? Hello. Blake. What's up, guys? Hey, uh, no, no pressure. Uh, I'll clear it with you first, but uh, I'm on a podcast with Hassan Minaj. I don't know if you know Hassan. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Him. Well, listen, he brought it up, not me, okay? But he was asking me what it feels like to dunk and uh, on somebody. No, specifically on somebody. On somebody. And I told him. Why would he ask you that? Why he Blake? I said, why would you ask me that? Well, he's seen me play. I first asked him, "Have you been able to dunk in a game?" And he was like, "Yeah." I don't know if he could hear you. Okay. Uh, listen, don't bust my balls now. Uh, uh, Hassan asked if I ever asked you that question because I said I don't imagine it feels the feeling ever goes away for somebody who still does it every day of their life. And if, listen, no pressure, but could you give us a soundbite of what it feels like to dunk on somebody? And congrats on the move. It's, it's crazy because the crowd goes nuts and you just get like a kind of surge of adrenaline. But uh, on the road, I think it's even better because the crowd goes, oh, like it's like, oh, like me. <laughs> on the road, when you dunk there, is it a better feeling when the people that don't like you still give it up for you? Yeah. Yeah, you, that must be kind of cool. It's like you go into that the way you're in, right? I mean, the crowd will look right. And, uh, or, or it's just like, ask, him if, fulfilling. ask him if it's still fulfilling. Ask him if it's still fulfilling. Hassan wants me to ask you, uh, and I could probably answer because I know too. Dunking but on somebody is—is is it still fulfilling? Is it still fulfilling to yeah, commu- sure. to to completely humiliate somebody? To co- he wants me to ask you: Is it still fulfilling to completely humi- humiliate somebody like that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. Blake Griffin and I humiliate people. Thanks, Blake. Sincerely, congrats, man. Thanks, <laughs> man. All right, I'll talk to you later. Well, I'm. I'm going to do what I did when I first dunked on somebody and want to pretend that that's just what it is. I think two things, amazing things happen. Right now, Rick just described, just casually, that he, in-game, yaks on people. Yakking in a game is one thing, but yakking on someone is just a whole nother level. And then I want to acknowledge a second point. Yeah, this is cool. Just in full stride. Rick <laughs> called Blake Griffin. And Blake, who has every reason to not pick up. I didn't think he was going to answer. 100% picked up. By the way, if we want to show, throw to some Shams Charania coverage. What does that mean? Blake's in transit. He's moving. He's going from Detroit 
to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. He's probably there by the time this comes out. And 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 Rick, super cash, man, got him to pick up. That's cool. During a time when people don't pick up the phone. What's how so? Like evening time? People don't pick up the phone. Period. So, oh, during the time as in twenty twenty one. Just in terms of yeah, just right. like where we're at socially. Yeah. So I just want to just give you props. Man, that's so. Two cool. amazing things kind of happen back to back. I would say what I've just witnessed, knowing those things, probably have given you. I I would say it's probably sweeter than doing the White House Correspondence Dinner and or hosting your own show. It's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, by the way, if you want to know what it feels like to dunk on somebody, yeah. you just did it. <laughs> Having somebody answer your phone call, it's probably like when I, you know, hosted the correspondence dinner. No, 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 no. <laughs> Which is like, cause, cause when 30 I, people have ever done. Cause, cause when, when, when I was 10, I didn't dream of that. When I was eight, I didn't dream. When I was 15, I didn't dream. When I was 20, I didn't dream of that. When I was 25, I didn't dream of that. What about 28? Probably. Okay. For a bit. Yeah. Also, can we talk about the, the irony of me wearing a bad boys back to back I know that's shirt weird. when he yeah, answers? I know. Um, but the question on everyone's mind, Hassan. Hassan? Mm-hmm. Sure. Hassan, what was it like when your mother left when you were young? Oh, boy. Are we going to get into this? I've already unpacked this. Yeah? By unpacked, you mean spoke about it publicly or dealt with it personally? Both. I do think it's an interesting thing, but we could... Uh, I, I, I'll, I'm, no, I mean, we could we can get into it. Look, I'm uh, my, my story is very similar to like a lot of uh, uh, immigrant stories where, you know, children of immigrants, people whose families come to the States... You generally have uh, a parent kind of establish roots. Sometimes other parents go back and forth. My mom was still in school. She was doing med school. So she did her residency in New York. Then she did it in Stockton. Then um, she got located to Sacramento where where we were. So yeah. So she was gone for eight, eight years? Is that yeah. Right? I mean, in total, the schooling and all that sort of stuff was... Yeah, How old yeah. were you uh, during that time? Um, uh, you know, z- z- ages zero through eight. But oh, I right st- away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, um, yeah, it was just a lot of kind of back and forth sort of, yeah, we were, we were, there was a lot of, um, um, how would you just say we, we were in, we were in transit, we were establishing our life in America. You know what I mean? Um, I'm watching myself editing this and seeing now I'm not going to interrupt him, but we are going to be having goblin dicks running around while he's talking about that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Totally, <laughs> yeah, yeah um, totally. It's like a deep moment, and there's just goblin dicks everywhere. So when you, when you, uh, a lot, it's a lot of a, uh, I don't know what the word is. I don't want to call it a cliche, but help me out with the word. I, I, it's a common. You're just, you're just establishing roots. It's this common story of immigration and, and you know immigrant families establishing their roots in the country. It just takes time. You know, my mom was still in school. She's finishing school. Med school is a long journey. Residency rotation. Does she come back and, and forth? Yeah, so she'd still come back and forth. But a lot of those early years was me and my dad. Because my dad was a state employee at the Cal State EPA. He's a chemist. So he worked with pesticides in Sacramento, and, and, and I grew up in Davis. What do you have against Sacramentoans? I love Sacramento. I was making a joke that you were calling them pesticides. No. Uh, and then your mom comes back, and you find out you have a sister. Yeah. I only kind of know that story. Yeah. So she, she when my sister was born, she went. She was in India. My, my sister basically, you know, uh, she was born in the States. Then my, Same parents. Same parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was born in the States. Um, I was there when she was born. Then she goes to India. She's raised by my grandparents for the first few years. Then when my mom finishes her residency slash rotations, Aisha and my grandparents come to the States and we're all kind of like re- reunited. And I was eight at the time. Is there something to your your parents being in th- these professional like uh, advanced degree fields? Is there a better way of referring to those? Um and I, I've heard a lot of stories of of children of immigrants whose parents don't want them to get into this business, get into the arts. Yeah, was that yeah. something that you hundred percent? Yeah, really. And it's crazy. Like I, I don't know if I would recommend. I have two kids. I, I don't know if I'd recommend my kids getting into this racket. That's a completely different reason. Why is that? Because you're in it. Yeah, and it's like I, when my dad told me not to get into the restaurant business. Oh, did your dad like? Did your dad own a restaurant? And he's from Thailand. <laughs> no, For real? no, 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 no. Uh, I was pretending I'm an uh, immigrant. Yeah, he had restaurants. He's like, uh, do whatever you want. Be a, you know, if you want to do comedy acting, my 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 grandfather was in the arts. Like, just don't be, don't do what I am doing because my dad knew the the struggles of it. Got it. He was just like, it's gonna. Yeah. Incidentally, my brother's in the restaurant business. Shout out to the Greyhound in Highland Park, by the way. Oh, great. Um, 
uh, was there a moment where they accepted it? Have they accepted it? Yeah, totally. I mean, they're they're on board now. Were they on board before you before you hit it big? No, uh, no, nah, not really. I I'm, because I turned down law school, man. It was intense. That was my plan too, law school. For real? Yeah. Thank God we didn't go, man. I Thank God so we though. didn't go, bro. Really? I think I would have been a great litigator. Watch, I think so. watch. Tell me, give me some argument and watch this, me fight it this, down. This water is lukewarm. Uh, how, how do you want the water to be? I'd love if it was chilled and or iced. What made you tell me it was lukewarm instead of just letting me know that it wasn't chilled or iced? It looks like you're looking for a complaint and I, I'm not sure. I, well, I mean, one of the things that you wanted to do is establish that I was comfortable. So one of the things that I think is common and, and, and I, and I obviously Rick, I see you as a, as a very affable, genial person, a kind, genial, good host would, would assuming if they were to ask their guest, Hey, you comfortable? Are you good with your coffee and your water? I'm assuming they'd put effort into it. Would you not agree with that statement? You know, I'll say that I have so much to grow, to learn and to grow, but one of the be better qualities I have as a host is to never assume. And what I'm trying to do is not See, not make your tongue feel the most comfortable. I'm trying to make you feel the most comfortable. Okay. And since I know you're going to be here for an hour plus, it's easier to metabolize room temperature water than chilled water. Okay. And I want your body to feel comfortable. Okay. If you want ice, I got a freezer. You have ice cubes in your iced coffee because I asked you if an iced coffee, which by the way, was my pleasure to get, would sure. be good for you. Sure. So, so you thought a good idea would be to give me... Lukewarm water, fine. I accept your premise there. Room temperature. Room temperature. Room temperature. You can call it whatever, what, whatever you want to call it. And Let then, the record state that it's room temperature. And then give me an ice diuretic. So you want something nice and clean and smooth for my tum-tum and then a, a straight up I diarrhea made, chaser. I made sure to ask you if you wanted both drinks. I, I do. And you took what I offered. Yeah, and I concede that. I did say yes. Yes. So what is the complaint? I thought that... You assumed. I assumed. Yeah, strike one. I, I assumed. Mm-hmm. Given any other institution outside of this living room that we're currently in right now, any place you go to when they serve you water, the standard fare is that it is chilled. That's all. Uh, That's may, all. May I offer perspective? Sure. When I'm having an interview with Hassan, sure. What's going on at Sharky's down the street doesn't uh -huh. really matter to me. Okay. There is only one living room when I'm in it, and that is the living room I'm in. Okay. I'm here with you. If I want to compare everything to the outside world, I'm going to be too anxious to even have a conversation. So what I'm going to do is, as we learn in the rug business, shorten the showroom. Anything that I have is yours, but I would like to give you an option to make it easier. Would you like water? Would you like an iced coffee? If you say yes, hey, enjoy. Okay, I can see it. Now, one more question. Sure. Could I get you some ice for that water? I would love some. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be right back. Do you even work for Postmates? Uh, p put your manager on the phone. Hello? Hello? <laughs> hey guys, there was nobody on the phone. That's what we call a comedy bit. Hi, I'm comedian Adam Ray and guest favorite of the Take Your Shoes Off podcast with Rick Glassman. And I'm here to tell you about Patreon. Patreon.com slash Take Your Shoes Off. Is that right? Where you can get exclusive episodes, behind the scenes content, group zooms, foot rubs, uh, nip shots, you can all get at patreon.com slash take your shoes off. It's the best podcast out there. I love going on it. Rick and I always have a great time and I'm still coming back for more because Rick's a lot of fun and you can get more of that fun at patreon.com slash take your shoes off. Yeah. Water, it, water good? It, it can, water's great. Water was perfect. And you just, you went in with one cube, which I think was the right amount. Yeah. Yeah. So I ultimately decided not to go to law school because it was just, it was just, it was like I, I, too much conversation. If the cup if, is half full or half empty Sure. and they never ask this question, what are we doing in the cup? Yep. You know, a cup that's half empty is an optimist if you're drowning in it. Right. That's true. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, let's go back to 2014. Sure. Uh, the Daily Show and the Howard Stern Show were where I got my information. Wow. Howard Stern. People are big. I did not know they are diehard Howard Stern heads. I was when Howard Stern was on E in middle school and high school. Wow. I don't listen. I mean, I love him. He's great. What about when you get a rental car and, and they have free Sirius? I've, I've, I've had eight rental cars. And, Got it. And um, You won't even... Okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm my father's <laughs> child. Unrelated. Right, Just, right. Who isn't, really? Right, right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's a... Getting on The Daily Show yeah. is like... Also, there's something... There's a, a credibility that I think is kind of publicly spoken about at this point, more so, you know, a few years ago. Yeah. But like 
that is a real it became with John Stewart at least that's when I got into it it's a real news source it's yeah. really where you get your news right. it's 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 left facing but yeah so you when you got on that it was like uh I remember like that's you know you our friends get on stuff and sometimes you know when Shia books Transformers it's like this is a big one yeah you know that was a big one um will you t- talk to me a little bit about uh meeting John what that felt and then I could ask a more specific question, but I don't want sure. to kind of lead it. I mean, yeah, it was it was one of those things where I, I'm sure you've had this experience before. You meet somebody in person. It's a classic show business thing. And I was like, he's shorter than I thought, you know, and and, and you know, when I saw Jewish Yoda approach me, I was like, it's it's John. But oh, it becomes less intimidating because also it was during a work day. So he wasn't in the suit. We did my whole screen test and he was just in his regular street clothes. Right. And um, Madrigal told me he's like, and, and by the way, shout out to Al Madrigal. Al told me, look, John is a stand up. He started in stand up. Now he's the host of The Daily Show and he's this guy, but he's going to want to talk to you about right. the road and what it's like doing stand up and what your life has been like. That's still really interesting because he has to do this show four days a week. So he's like, look, in between the little things that you have to do during, during the screen test, chop it up with him about stand up and um thank god i was a fan of the show but i never became so obsessed with that show the same way i was with say like basketball right like why I, because you would have been too nervous i would have been turned too nervous like if it was yeah. Allen iverson or kobe or michael jordan you know what i mean i would have like probably choked up and stuttered and, and been weird uh, i remember i met vince carter once and i was like super stuttery and, dude let me tell you this and yeah it's, it's it's oxymoronic because i'm telling you I, I made a post on my insta story last night and then took it down because it doesn't need to be public okay. now here i'm talking about it. it's not that big of a deal okay but i i posted yesterday um when Bla- when the news with blake getting traded yeah uh uh, my uh, Iverson, my Kobe, my Jordan, uh, and my Vince Carter rookies, and then the Blake Griffin one. The other four are graded, and the Blake Griffin was just from random pack I, I happened to find uh-huh. and opened a couple days ago. Yeah, but the four names you mentioned—I mean, they're not a random names. Those are the you know those are the four. If those you, are the goats of like our era. Our, yeah, yeah, of our yeah. Era. Some Vince of the, was so, when I mean yeah that when the All Star game was out like that was he was the Jordan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just so those you, four people were on my Instagram story. So you know how they imprint on your mind. I was a fan of John. We would watch him in college, but it wasn't one of those things where I devoured every episode. Yeah. Like, period. It was, I wasn't a super, super, super fan. Were you and a I, Big Daddy fan, though? Of course. He was great. He was a good actor in that movie. I think it was one of his best performances. Anyways, all that is to say is it's good that I wasn't so obsessed that he had kind of like this insane kind of God status in my mind. I just looked at him like, Oh, he's this established comedian that I, that, you know, I look up to and I admire, which I think helped me. And even in my screen test, like a couple of the producers were like, yo, don't make fun of him in the, in, in your desk chat. But I could just feel like make fun. Oh, just like bus balls, bus balls. Yeah. But anytime you get a chance, an opportunity to elevate a script, and and John ended up telling me that later. I was like, what did you see in like Rob Riggle or Steve Carell or Ed Helms? And he was like, any correspondent I, I saw that could elevate material, basically take a line on the page and make it twice as funny, three like times as funny. Like what you did with your, your audition tape where you took the lines, but you made it your own version of it. Correct. And then there would be times where I would, I would break, I would kind of break the fourth wall, break expectation. To at camera the, four. To camera four or to him. I remember there was like a couple lines. At the time, he was really promoting his movie Rosewater, um, which was like one of his first films that he directed. So he left The Daily Show for a little bit. I don't know if you remember, John Oliver was hosting The Daily Show I don't. for like three, four months while John was directing this film. He comes back. So this is his directorial debut. Mm-hmm. And I remember in the middle of my chat, I was referring to another movie um, that got like a, a 78 on Rotten Tomatoes. And then I end up kind of throwing to him and I'm like, which was higher than Rosewater? And he's like, actually, it, it got an 82. And I'm like, nobody saw the movie. And then I kept going into the chat and he started cracking up. He kind of like did the John. Some John would sometimes do this or like hit the desk. He started cracking up. And then all the producers and writers started cracking up. But that was a little passing lane moment where I read the passing lane and I could have gone for it, which I did. And it went well. I had a fast break. Yeah. You go for it. And it doesn't that's go the, well. That's the craft. You straight up whiff. But at that point, you know, 
I, I was already five or six minutes into a 10 minute chat, like into a, a long, it's cycle. amazing instincts comedians have to, yeah. to, to, it's not a guarantee, but you mitigate risk live time. Yeah. yeah keep going. Yeah. And so I'm it, in, we're in the pocket. We're a few minutes in. He's already tr trusts me. Yeah. Yeah. And there was times where I was looking to camera, camera one, which is the main camera and through my peripheral. And this had happened so many times before with Aristotle. Instagram handle here. Instagram. Aristotle, I could see in my peripheral, if my chat was going really well for Goatface, I could see him cracking up or smiling just through the corner of my eye. So I could see John watching me. And like he had a little smirk on his face. And by the way, at the time, he's hosted the show now like 16 years. Yeah. He's been in, he's been doing this a long time. So I can tell he's vibing. Like it's, he's having a- You're invincible. At that yeah, point. I'm, in, I'm in the pocket. Mm -hmm. I can make a bold play now. Yep. You know, I can scramble out of the pocket and maybe run in into the end zone or to use a gambling analogy you're playing with their money at this point you correct could, you could you could put the stakes a little bit higher correct correct and so um the proudest thing that the thing i'm most proud of isn't the the tape and doing the extra credit to get the audition it's the fact that um i took a chance you know and, and a, there, were, there there were a lot of auditions for like shows that i really loved i remember i, I auditioned for um, this show on NBC called Community, and I so wanted to get you the could show. Just say community. A, a community. <laughs> of the show on NBC called Friends. <laughs> dude, dude, a lot of people don't know. Like it was a cult show. It wasn't. It wasn't Friends level, but yeah, it was a popular show. I remember auditioning for Community. I want. I remember reading the script, being like, "I want to be Abed so bad. I want to be on this show so bad." And I remember auditioning for it. I choked. I was like stuttery. I got dry mouth. I remember they asked me to slate. I was like, "What does that mean?" Why are you nervous for that? Because you don't have you don't have Vince Carter in the room with you there. I just remember reading the script and being like, "This is actually really good and funny, and I think this show is going to be important and significant." But why is that different than Daily Show, which already is important and significant? Is it the improvisation? That's, actually, that's a really that's a really good question. I think um, that involved acting, which I hadn't taken a ton of acting classes with. I hadn't done a ton of like audition workshop type of stuff. And with this, I felt, dude, I've done this a million times before. I've, I've made a bunch of videos that are just like this. So most of your career has been that, has been making videos that are like this. It's extemporaneous, it's scripted at most. A yeah. lot of improvisation, yeah. talking to camera, performing, stand-up. Now you're about to do the morning show, which is acting, but I'm, I'm assuming, and I feel like I'm right, at least relatively speaking, you're not that nervous. Right, because I'm playing a fake TV host again. But, oh, is it because you're playing that character? Yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm even when I'm on set and I'm shooting, I'm like, I know this set. I've spent years on this set. I spent four years of The Daily Show on a set just like this. Spent another three years at Patriot Act on a set just right. like this. Like, So you're it, doing... It doesn't feel foreign at all. So your confidence comes from your preparation. Yeah, it, it feeling comfortable. Feeling comfortable is everything. Uh, and, and the times that I'm the most proud is when I just stretch my aperture just a little bit. That's when I feel really like, Wow, you you put fives on each side of the bench press. You know what I mean. You add. Yeah, I knew what you meant at aperture. Yeah, uh, a lot I've, of people. A lot of people aren't following. I've aperture. never heard that as an analogy. Just letting a little bit more light in or opening something up a bit more. Yeah. Um, but the fives on your side is is funny. <laughs> I haven't worked out in so long. Really? But, yeah, but it's like. Yeah, you know what? You know how put five more on, put yeah, five on each side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you yeah. know how people fuck around and they go put twenty fives on each side. You go, hey, don't no. be so bold, just put fives. Yeah, because it sounds like fives, but it's really ten. It's really ten. It's really fifty-five if you count the bar. Sure. Yeah. I feel like I lost you on 55. No, no, no. I got it. But I was I was actually kind of a little little hurt. I was like, hey, man, we do the bar with 45s, and then I might put some 5s and some 10s on if I'm feeling bold. Gotcha. You know what I mean. F intimately. I mean. You going to show me? No. I'm you going to pull a barbell down right no, now? No, I'm going to say the only weights I have. <laughs> oh, God. Are you serious? And out of respect for That's John great. Stewart to Steve Corral to Michael Scott, yeah. uh, they're for tone, not bulk. Yeah. Shout out to the office. We'll Shout put their Instagram the handle yeah. here. Sure. Um, I love you talking about you being proud of you taking a chance. A little bit of a chance, yeah. Because um, my biggest uh, obstacles uh, interpersonally um, have been from chances I've taken, but they're also where the biggest bonds that I've created and the jobs that I've gotten. When you took a chance. Yeah. And, and What's an example of a time that you took a chance and you were like, wow, this actually really worked out and it clicked? Um. When I auditioned for Undateable, yeah. uh, it was my first uh, first uh, pilot season, um, right. first time uh, 
relatively speaking, testing. I tested for two shows and the other one was something different. But uh, I'm in Warner Brothers with all the executives. I've never been in the building, uh, on the lot, excuse me, let alone in a building like this. And uh, I wanted to get a laugh up top because you know how you were saying with John Stewart, you had that six minutes. So once once they trust you, then you have what I think of as the Mario star. You could still fall <laughs> in a pit, but you could run through yeah, shit, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, dun, 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 I don't know if we could clear that. You can't clear that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, um, so my goal uh, has was to, I need I need them to, I need to feel safe enough. Yeah. So, so just, I, I just, uh, I was FaceTiming with, uh, with my dad beforehand and I was uh, going to go into the audition because it was my first time auditioning and I wanted to experience it with my parents. Um, so I was, uh, I go in on FaceTime. I ended up doing, I met them in the hall and we did it. But like uh, auditioning on FaceTime and then on all my headshots, I have this headshot um, from NBC Friends. Um, my headshot is a picture of David Schwimmer, but it says my name on it. Okay. And uh, I just signed them all, you know, Rick Glassman plus Bill Lawrence equals dollar signs. Just like little, little yeah, gags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to, to be with these executives and introduce them to my dad, which isn't even necessarily funny. Right. Could easily be annoying. Yeah. But if, if it finding a way to like, I've, I've messed up enough yeah. to know that right, at least I feel right before this goes bad, just to call that bad idea, dad, you know, and just, you know, like, yeah. The, so it was an endearing moment. Um, it was an endearing moment and, and it worked. Uh, uh, I became friends with Blake Griffin at, at just for laughs, Montreal, where I was so, uh, so many chances i brought i have a puppet i brought blake up on, i never i met blake right before the show he's hosting it yeah. we didn't really talk much i'm on stage i call blake up on stage i sit on his lap and i'm his puppet and just making taking all these chances yeah i became friends with blake from taking chances I talked about this on the podcast you could check out the blake griffin episode we talk about it but uh we become buddies we're talking we're maybe going to do a podcast together we sh we film a few trying to figure it out and then there was an episode where I got a little too familiar and was getting super aggressive. And with him, with him, I was at his oh, house. Shit. He had just hurt his leg, so yeah. he's in like one of those things where you have to push. Um, he was going to get me a, a bottle of water, room temperature, by the way. Okay. And I asked, "Could I do it? Like, don't get off the wheel." Yeah. And he goes, "No, no." He made a confident guy joke, so I, I made a joke back about he was a bitch. And okay. I, I'm even now the way I whispered it. I do. Yeah, I even, there's a little bit of regret. Yeah, but more. Yes, but. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about the story, but even retelling it with him not here, I feel like... Edit it out. Edit this out. Just I let, think it's okay. Let it fly. I just crossed a boundary. The term bitch, yeah. I didn't realize what it meant in the NBA community. I don't know oh, if you know, okay. no, but he know. explained it to me. It's the worst thing you could call somebody. I didn't know that. I'm like playing high status, low status. Yeah. We ended up like... I, I didn't talk to him for like a year. And ever since then, I even now I'm like, I'm sorry about what happened a few years ago. You know? Wow, no kidding. In my head... I'm just asking him. I'm just asking to sit on his lap. And when we talk about math and jokes, to me, it's the same joke. Punching up and punching down far enough away is the same thing. Right. It's a status joke. Yeah. Whether I'm playing this yeah. or I'm playing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm low status here. Yes. You're right, right. It's the same math. But in, but in that moment, he may have perceived, hey, I'm, I'm treating us like we're the same status. So now yeah. this feels... I got or you. it doesn't matter. I'm not... We're in my house in a living room yeah, yeah, or an yeah. office. We're not on stage. Yeah, and that I that idea. Oh, of, so there's a little bit of like, yo, chill, bro. Like, I'm, I, which my, I my knees hurt. Yeah, wasn't and picking you, up. And on. You weren't picking up. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm saying the craft comes from. Listen, some people, some people want to take the last shot. Some people don't. Yeah, somebody who's great is somebody who wants to take the last shot. But not everybody could hit that last shot. Right. You have to be in the mindset of being able to take it, wanting to take it, and then getting good enough. Yeah. And the craft is knowing. And uh, the, here's the math and the science that I, I could I could break down in numbers almost how you know. But it's that thing. You might not have made the Rosewater joke as your opening bit. Not at all. Never. But you read the room. You felt yes. it out enough. Um, anyway, I, I, coffee, weed, fun, talking way too much. You know what it is, man? This could be this could be your great personal challenge. Your ability to understand comedy from a very mathematical math, mathematical perspective is one thing. Where things get complicated is over here is where people are. People are messy, complicated. Not people. questioning. Yes. And this is, there's, there's a clash here. Yeah. The empirical and then the subjective and mm -hmm. the unempirical. 
those things, there's, there's moments where this can infiltrate map on this very well. You have a great set that honors all these things that people intrinsically who don't follow comedy, they don't know why they're laughing, but you're totally Tex Winter of comedy. Like you're doing, I don't the, know the, the Tex Winter. Tex Winter created reference. the triangle offense. So he's oh, not Phil Jackson. Phil, no, 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 he's the teacher of, he's gotcha. the original Obi-Wan Kenobi to his Qui-Gon. Yoda. Yeah. To Jewish, get out of here. <laughs> Earlier when you brought up Jewish Yoda, I shoot him away. Oh, so you should have come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You should make little, little baby, you should make little baby Yoda, but with John's head on it. That's what I'm going to, what yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah, do. Jewish Yoda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Empirical all that is to say, yeah, subjective. yeah. So there's times where it maps on perfectly, like a beautiful script, a beautiful set. You're honoring all these things that make art very beautiful and it, cause it honors these mathematical things. Things get complicated this is the complicated part of show business. People, people, ego, feelings, mm-hmm. all these things. And that's where shit gets complicated sometimes. And, 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 and that may be one of your challenges. That's, that's why the one man show is the idea. It's, yes. it's creating a state, you know, in, 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 in art or anything interpersonal, it's, it's trust and correct. Um, and creating a space where everyone's in on the thing. I, I, it's a you fine don't feel line. That way? I, I feel that you want them to feel a little uncomfortable. No, see, I, and, I don't want people to feel uncomfortable for my act, but I understand it's it's uh it's it's part of the cost of the act. Got it. I've used this analogy before, but so some people have to get it. Some people don't have to get it for it to be fun. I would rather everybody get it, but you can't tell them. You know, when you're watching Iron Man, and I've used this for a different way before, everyone watching knows Robert Downey Jr. isn't Tony Stark. They know it's a movie because that's what movies are. Yes. He can't look to the camera four, camera one and say, hey, guys, this is just a movie. Yeah, I'm an actor. This is a movie. Yeah. But the people at home know that. They've been conditioned. That doesn't happen on stage. That doesn't happen with live performances. I can't look to them and say just joking because then it defeats the point. I want them to know that. But not everybody questions things. I want everybody to be in on it. But the truth is they won't be. And that not only could it not affect me, that becomes part of the environment. This person knows that this person doesn't get it. Now I'm playing to everyone, yeah. but you're the only one who likes me. But this person is the reason this person likes me. Oh, I get what you're saying. So yeah. So the, the the big difference, and and to me where the craft is, I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun despite you. Whether or not you were here, I'd be doing this. It's almost like laughing with instead of laughing at. I got you. You know, so in a room, you aren't... Joe Blow, who's being made fun of, you're part of the environment that exists in life and gotcha. why commentary is happening. Gotcha. Uh, I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, That's a little bit of the coffee, a little bit of the chocolate hitting right now. The talking too much? No, just like this. This you're going through. You're going through all the 36 chambers. We're going deep. Why 36 chambers? Is that Doug the, Wu-Tang, again? the Wu-Tang Clan album? Uh, Enter oh. the 36 chambers. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know so many oh, references. references. Oh, gotcha. But. Uh, I'm happy to ask, and I just trust you. Like, yeah, I mean, you're going deep into the Shaolin. So yeah. any, anytime you say something, and if I don't know, I just know it's either hip-hop or basketball analogy. I, yeah, I mean, I sp- I'm pretty simple in that way. Um, I'm starting to integrate a little bit of philosophy, but not too much. Where, where are you learning your philosophy? I love I love Stoicism, so I love like Marcus Aurelius and stuff like that. From Gladiator. Marcus Aurelius is the character in Gladiator, right? But, yeah. But he's based on the the OG philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, right? the original. I don't know what he's named after. There's a book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, which is like Stoic philosophy that I really like. That someone was like, "You should read this. This will this will help you." And I was like, "Okay." Have you learned anything? Yeah, I think um, learning to accept things for what they are and accepting that is that Marcus Aurelius. Yes. You know that's the fundamental nature of. of I wonder Stoic if I should. I, is it on tape? Yeah, you yeah. I mean this is this is OG stuff. This is like not new. It's like Plato's The Republic. Like it's like it's this is the stuff's been around for a long time, yeah. Um I want to move through a few more questions before it gets too too long. Sure. Uh I don't have a good judge on when people get tired. Uh I but I know it happens. I mean, we're peaking. We're peaking right now. Does that mean it's it's done? We're at the top of the, you know, like um you're a math person. What graph is this? A sine curve? Sine or cosine? This is, a, this is a bell curve, right? Yeah. So in terms of the bell curve, we're here. All right, question for you. Yeah. Is, the, right about is proper formatting 
to do what Steve Martin did to where once he's here, he stops? Or do you respect a storytelling and know there's an arc? And then even though this is the peak, it still needs to resolve. Yeah, I, I like, I feel like comedy is a very intimate thing. It really is. So just treat them the way you would treat someone you love. Like, hey, we've we've climaxed. Let's end this intimate evening. Do you know what I mean? Let's, let's no. Let's, let's talk for a few more hours. Sure. So <laughs> yes, I understand. Um, <laughs> yeah, you get it. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, you're you're a, you know your version of the podcast is tantric in nature. So it's just. I, I, I don't notice until I'm editing uh-huh. that I go like, oh, the energy, because I'm so like, yeah. especially if I'm like wh- how I'm feeling now, right. I'm having such a good time. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not reading the and room. The, and the cheeks are a little bit red. You're in a, you're, you're flowing. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I, I feel like I didn't get to ask you enough stuff. Ask me. Let's go. Uh, I want to talk about the White House Correspondents Dinner, okay. which I saw when it happened. Wow. Uh, I, I've seen it three times. I saw okay. when it happened. I watched it again. It just came up on YouTube a couple years ago. Just like, just like the algorithm. Gave yeah. It to you. Just because I watched, I watched that stuff. You yeah, know, yeah. Suggested it to me. Yeah. Uh, and then I watched it again because before you came over. Sure. Um, and I have some observations that are more questions and observations about your mind state during it. Ask me. But one thing I'm, uh, I want you to describe is I saw the the rush that you had, um, being in this environment, and I also would assume you would anticipate that. What is the preparation for what the chemicals in your body are going to do for you before? Oh, well, by the way, I don't know if that sounded. Hard. I thought you 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 crushed it. It was amazing. This isn't a oh, critique. Thanks, this is this is human yeah. bodies. Yeah. Um, the cheeks getting red. You know, uh, to do that, the hardest, biggest stage, which is not even designed for comedy, but is. Yeah. How do you how do you prepare for that? And in the moment, are you completely present, or are you aware of? Would somebody say like? This here are some of the tricks. Yeah, I mean, there's three people that I kind of reached out to that I think gave like really great advice. Um, one was Larry Wilmore, Wilmore who had done it the year before me. Larry was like, "Look, everybody uses Stephen Colbert's set as the benchmark. He did a character piece, and shout out to Larry. Larry was like, you 'You're not a character guy. If you want to, you could, you could do a character piece.' He goes, 'I think you're a great storyteller with a great perspective.'" You have a very unique style. Be Hassan. Do your thing. So make it. Is it, it Hassan? Yeah. We've talked about this. Have we even, talked about this? I don't, uh, I don't even remember the Hugo's lunch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. You never corrected. I said Hassan five times. Yeah, but I was like, he's he's going. Hassan. Hassan? Mm-hmm. Sure. Hassan. Hassan. Uh, I will yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. So anyways. Um... Uh, um He's like, make it your own, man. And I go, okay, got it. The other thing that Steven told me was, hey, just know. Colbert? Colbert, Colbert yeah. Cool. That, yeah, it's pretty. You it, called him for this? Uh, emailed, yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's like Griffin. Yeah. I mean, an email is a little bit, man, like, hey, I know you're hosting your own show every night. Just if you get back to me. And he did get back to me. He told me that silence means you're actually crushing. So stay in the pocket. If I was watching during moments like yeah. that where that was... I noticed that. Yeah. Great advice. So he's like, you're playing to everybody at home. And in fact, yeah. their their silence, obviously don't overplay this to the point that you're bombing, but their silence, people at home are going to love it because fundamentally, again, the expectation of the gig, the reason why it's so palpable, people love it. It's a prize fight where the two, it's the yeah. comedian meets the audience. They're not just watching you. They're watching you in this room. You in the room. If it, if it was live from my home via green screen, yeah. it's it's why if they ever do these remote versions of these award shows, it's not the same. You have to put, fundamentally, television is an emotion machine. You have to put the two people in the room, which is why yeah. I wanted to do this in person. Like The whole point of doing anything is to put two people in the room. People want to see that fundamental tension that's what i was talking about about people not being in on it that's part of what it is that's the silence yeah and it needs to exist and and the whcd is that at the highest level because fundamentally you're going to their party to roast them yep and they're in a game you know at award shows they might not be comedians but it's all entertainment business yeah this this is not this is a different world this is senators members of congress heads of the media Usually the president, the cabinet, all of those people, the vice president. You did the first year the president wasn't, yeah. it was his first one. Yeah. 2017? Yeah. Um, and so 
And so he told me, just be aware of that. And then, and then did you uh, ask him anything? Did you, did you understand what that meant before you did it? Um, yeah, I got, I got what he was saying. And then I think I also talked to Joel McHale who had done it years before. All that is to say is, um, you're right, man. Those first five, six minutes, I remember just the rush of it. It's just at an altitude you don't understand because you look around and you're like, uh, that's Don Lemon. That's Wolf Blitzer. That's Rachel Maddow. That's so, you know what I mean? You're just like, oh, it's happening. I'm in the arena. It's happening yeah. all right now. And I was lucky enough that by like minute five and a half, and I think the set's roughly 25 and a half minutes, but like right around five and a half, mm-hmm. I could feel like I'm here. Is it's, that stand up? Is that not? Is it now stand up again? It's 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 not stand up. It's just like you've done this set. I had done the set in New York probably over a hundred times at the at the cellar and just worked it as stand up. As stand up, yeah, yeah. I would have my note cards and I was like, hey guys, I'm hosting the White House Correspondent. Can I try some of the jokes? And I had just run that set a hundred plus right. times in front of an audience. So it's like a it's like a half hour special. Correct. I t- I really thought of it that way. I was like, this is a political half hour special right. in a in a ballroom in Washington D.C. And then at that point, I'm like, you have another 20 minutes or so, right around like seven, eight, nine, ten, minute 11. I really felt like I was in a good groove. And um, Ramin Hadiyadi, who works at The Daily Show, he's one of like the people that captures all the social content for the show. He came to the dinner with me. They didn't have a seat for him. So he was just sitting kind of cross-legged, just right in the front row. Mm-hmm. I looked they down. Have a seat for him? You didn't have a seat. because it's so disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. But... Uh, he's just sitting there and I look down and I see him and he's like, yo, it's going great. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, yo, you're, you're doing great. Cause it was still quiet. During like Ari off camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was like, you're doing good. And so at that point I just kind of downshifted into the back 14 minutes and, and, and act three of the set, there's a whole monologue. By the time I got to that point, like minute 21 ish, I was like, we're good. I'm safe. I'm in, they feel like they're in safe hands. They trust me. I trust them. I've earned the, my rapport with the room. I can bring this thing home. And I don't even need a huge laugh at the end. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, that was that. I wish I would have drank more water. Towards the end of the set, I got a bunch of cotton <laughs> mouth. But, but I didn't want to stop. Like, momentum is uh-huh. such a thing yeah. that I didn't want to stop to drink water. I'm like, where was I? I just felt like I was in this extemporaneous 25-minute high. And Would you ever do it again? I would love to do it again. I was supposed to do it again this past year, and then COVID happened. And How many people have done it twice? I think Jay Leno's done it twice. There's a couple people that have. I, I need to look it up. It's like Billy Crystal. There's a handful of people in history that have that have done it twice. It's crazy. I should look it up. There's some pretty like iconic people that have done it. Well, um, I want to uh, listen to uh, listen to the signs of of a graceful exit. Yeah. Um, uh, I I'm loving this. This is great. I'm loving this. I also having a friend in the living room. I told you at the beginning it felt like I'm not at home court and now this feels so much more home than having people on the balcony. Yeah. Um we're in a groove, man. But you're you're here in LA because of morning show. Yes. Um Are you are you uh reoccurring on it? Are you part of the cast now? How I'm, many episodes? I'm, re- I'm recurring on it this season, so I'm I'm part of season two. And uh my character um is like vying for his spot at the morning show and he, you know, me, Reese Witherspoon, and Jen Aniston, we kind of go at it as we try to, like, climb the ranks. And you start when? Next week? Oh, we've been shooting. Oh, I've, I thought I've, you just got here. No, I've been coming back and forth for a while. Yeah. Oh. Now, now when we were DMing, my first month that I was here, they were super strict about, like, yeah. hey, you got to pass all your COVID tests, which you still do. But they were very strict in the sense that they were block shooting me a, a bunch, and I was kind of going back and forth. Now I have a little bit more flexibility as we shoot the back half of we my We didn't stuff. acknowledge, I also feel like we got to say that yeah. uh, uh, I'm about to start filming my show and the sun is starting. So yeah. we're, so just we're both ba- tested, we're tested yeah, yeah, daily. Yeah. Um, I love that show. Uh, I saw that it's announcement. It's really great, man. Yeah, it's a really great show. I, I, I'm, I'm like super lucky to be a part of it. And you're playing a version of yourself, but... Ish, yeah. Kind of like... Um, he come, my character comes to the morning show and he wants to shake things up and, and, and kind of climb the ranks. Interesting that that show films in LA. It takes place in New York, <laughs> it right? Takes New York, yeah. yeah. And like the set looks so similar uh-huh. to Good Morning America, all those kind of morning shows that, yeah. Well, Hassan, I guess, I guess that's, we'll end it. I mean, I'll, I'll keep going. No, let's, we can end it. I mean, is, are there any questions that you have? Anything that feels like you kind of want to, you want to close the loop on? Oh, you know what? Uh, there is something, thing, um, 
that I that I uh, my girlfriend uh, slash uh, she helps produce the, the podcast. Okay. Um, we put questions together, and she finds them, and she found that you were on disaster date. Of course. And I don't. Rem- I, I was on disaster date, but yeah. I think I was an extra. You were. I think so. I don't uh-huh. remember if I was in and I had something or I was an extra because I just remember it was one of the first things I did where I felt like I made it. So, wow. So there's no difference between being the lead or an extra when you're on a set. Yeah. Um, but that, uh, which is, you know, it's a playing a character. What you even said is not what you do. No, not really. But this last last question. Um, that. Uh, do you know what I think of when I think of that time? Disaster Date, by the way, was an MTV reality show. It was like a punk style show. But go ahead. How desperate I was. For I doing was, it? I was desperate to pay my rent. To, well, you I had ne- to pay your rent. I needed anything. I needed anything. It reminds me of a... Uh, that was a really scary time in my life, bro. Were you like paycheck to paycheck? Yeah, I was paycheck to paycheck. I had just, you know, completely turned my back on law school and grad school completely. That door had shut. So it was a very scary time in my life where I'm like, yo, what have I done? You know, and and people don't know this. Like, you know, every date that you go on only pays you like a thousand dollars. And after taxes and all that stuff comes out, it's like three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, what you so, need to get one of those once a week, you get a few a year. Yeah. And and so you you scrape it all together. Yeah. What ends up hitting your bank account is like fifteen hundred bucks, sixteen hundred bucks. You're just like, I don't know how I'm gonna you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Get by. And and I, I I didn't have the, I was so terrified. Like, what if I have to sleep in my car? And then if I'm, if I'm sleeping in my car, how long can I do that? And then at what point do I have to drive back to Sacramento and just live at home and, and be like, yeah. I, so that was I, your low. That was my low. It was one of the lows. Yeah. Where I was like, I don't, I figured I'm like, I can, it got to a point where I'm like, I think I can sleep in my car. I think I can do a little bit of that, you know? If I have to, but I didn't know how long that runway would last, you know, maybe a month, maybe a couple months, you know, take a shower at like the 24 hour fitness or whatever. It was, it was a, a, a tough spot. Did you ever make, were you making money before daily show or was that it? Were you in that spot for years then? I was, yeah, I was in that spot for years. And then luckily I was able to get some NACAs. So that kind of patch stuff right. together. A little college bit. standup shows. Yeah. College standup shows, which, which was just a band aid enough to get by. And so, yeah, again, man, it's, it's that naivete. I just didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. How it's not how short life is, how long life is. Unless you're drowning in it. Yeah. And so at that time, man, like I I just figured again, whether it's a lie or whatever, we're told like if you just get a TV credit, everything will be okay. Yeah. Now, obviously, like we've been in the game long enough to know that, that that's not true, but that's what I told myself and it kept me there long enough. And I'm very lucky, man. Like I, I, I'm just very lucky that it, it ended up working out okay. Um, I don't think morning show will be out by the time this comes out it'll be out in the fall yeah so check morning show in uh uh Hassan, what's your instagram at hustle minaj m-i-n h-a-j h-a-j yeah uh you have a hassan minaj uh, dot com of course do you yeah we grabbed the url do you do anything with it it just has tour dates but i mean obviously we're not touring yet okay but i'll be touring hopefully soon thank you so much thanks man this was great <laughs> this is so um, i'm going to uh think about texting blake saying hey man is it cool if i just like I'm gonna post that, you know. Yeah, and now you, because now like the 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 chocolate's really hitting. You might get in your head about what's maybe I in should the wait. Text. Yeah, maybe I'll wait to text him. Maybe you'll wait till the morning, or maybe now's the time to do it. You don't know. Truth aside, it doesn't matter. It man. doesn't He's matter. Just a buddy. And yeah, just, I'm gonna ask him. It's Stream. whatever. Yeah. All right. All right, uh, man. Theme music. Yeah. Scoot. Beautiful. That was great. Blue.